Hey uh, guys, good to be with you. Um, obviously, uh, getting prepared here for a, a really good Northwestern team uh, that's uh, that's having a having a good year. <clears throat> obviously, beat us at their place a couple weeks ago. Uh, so quick turnaround uh, from our game on Saturday, and also from uh, from playing them once already. So um, they've got the great skill, uh, tremendous. Um, uh, they've got great ability to score the ball. Um, and uh, really, a, a really good positional length. Um, and uh, as always, uh, Chris does a great job putting, you know, putting your defense in difficult positions right now. They're good in transition, uh, showing the ability to really score in transition, score fast, uh, play fast. Um, you know, like any team, they've 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 went through a gauntlet of a schedule here, uh, like like we all. A face in this league and are going to face in this league. So um, they've had a week to prepare. I'm sure they'll, they will be um, ready to go. Um, obviously we need to be ready to go. It'll be, it'll be a great challenge. Another really high quality opponent in the big 10. Okay. We'll start with uh, Adam Jardy. Sorry. One on, one on mute there. Um, Chris, can you give us uh, an update, the latest on Jimmy Sotos and CJ Walker, and I guess uh, maybe Ibrahima, anybody else that's, that's dealing with stuff? Yeah, CJ and um, Jimmy will both be out. Um, excuse me. Sorry about that. CJ and Ibrahima are both out with injuries. Um, Ibrahima is still returning from his, um, uh, his MCL sprain. Uh, CJ from torn ligaments. And uh, Jimmy continues to be evaluated, so no, no definitive word right now on on him. But uh, CJ will be out again with torn ligaments, and um, Ibrahima will be out with an MCL sprain. So, how do you prepare for the game when you're without knowing if if a Jimmy's going to be available? I mean, we saw some other guys have to you know step into some roles uh, the other night. Uh, are you comfortable with having to push Michi? Uh, more uh, if it comes to that or, or what sort of things do you look at as you prepare for this game and, and hoping that, that you might have a Jimmy available? You know, I think that's, that's something that, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep somewhat close to the vest, but I, I think Adam, you, you know, you're looking at all options at this point, you know, we talked about uh, such a, um, a rare situation with uh uh, with injuries to one specific position dating back to our uh, our summer with Abel. So um, I think it'll it'll require guys to move around different positions uh, if Jimmy's not available and um, uh, we'll have to we'll have to have a really good understanding of what we're trying to do. I've got confidence in Michi. It's a lot to ask of a young man who just joined your program to step in and play a big ten game of this caliber. But uh, we do expect him to play for sure. Okay, hey, next up, Patrick Murphy. Chris, you mentioned the gauntlet that every team goes through in this league, but you look at Northwestern, and I think quick look, you see three straight losses since they played you guys last, but then you look at who those were, and it, it's three very good teams. Um, what have you taken from those games that – that maybe were different than what you did, you guys were able to do? And, and how much does that game, that loss, um, motivate guys any extra given the way it happened? You know, I think anytime you lose, you, obviously that stays with you uh, for sure, Patrick. I think, you know, as much as anything, though, right now, you're, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to get better. You're trying to play more quality possessions. So, you know, we're all – we're all prisoners of the moment in, in sports and we all uh, make uh, too many declarations based on, you know, one uh, win or one loss or this or that. Um, I think that's all um, part of us as humans, but you try to limit that as a coach and stick to the process of, of getting better and improving. And certainly, you know, I think, that, that's our challenge. Can we be, be better than what we were last time we played them? You know, uh, I think everybody's motivated uh, equally um, in, for the most part um, at, at, at this point. So uh, that's our focus right now is, is trying, to, trying to see if we can play more quality basketball. And, you know, those games were all kind of unique, all three they played. 
I mean, two of them were on the road to top 10 teams. Uh, and the third was at home to a team just outside the top 10. And so I think there's plenty of understanding of, uh, of the challenge that, the, that those guys faced. Was there anything in particular that you, when you look back at when you guys played Northwestern that stood out as this is what we have to do better to, to come out with the win this time? You know, I think uh, we turned it over a few too many times, which, which we've not said a whole lot this year, Adam or Patrick. Um, but we, we, you know, we turned it over a few too, too, too many times and that, that led to easy scores for them. They've got really good positional length across the board at the, particularly really at, at every position, but definitely the, uh, the two through kind of four or five, they just got long bodies and they were able to get some turnovers of uh, being in gaps on us. Okay, next up, Nicole Kraft. Hey, Chris. Um, I was hoping you could talk to us a little bit about Michi and his progression since he's been here. I mean, you know, as you well know, it's a big ask, all the things that have been asked of him to transition out of his high school experience. Um, and now he's going to have an even bigger role than you probably anticipated. So what progression have you seen since he first got to the program and, and kind of how are you evaluating him at this point? Yeah, Nicole, he's done, he's done a good job for us. You know, it's a lot to ask of a young man, as you mentioned. Um, you know, I don't think we, we anticipated that, um, that he could be counted on as much as he is right now. So, you know, you, you have to be careful with the young man's confidence at this point. Now, he's a really confident kid, which helps. But um, uh, it's just a lot to throw up. We're talking about a young man who just started live practice uh, a couple times last week. Um, and now you're asking him to go and play a top 15 team on the road and a team in Northwestern who's by all metrics top, I think, 25, 30, 40 in the country. So it's it's a really difficult uh, task, but I know he's anxious. He's looking forward to it. Um, we've got to simplify things for him as much as possible so that he's not overthinking. Um, you know, it's just, again, such a unique situation that uh, – that we have um, with, uh, with, with our injuries, that uh, it's, it's gonna require everybody to, to, to really respond the right way. Thank you. Okay, Tim Hall, you're up next. Tim, can't hear you. Okay. Audio not working. We'll go to uh, Adam Jardy. Chris, uh, the, the success you guys have had on, on the glass this season, I know <clears throat> rebounding can sometimes maybe be a stat that gets inflated a little bit, but uh, why do you think you've been able to be as effective as you have uh, and, and how important has that been to the success that you have? Had? You know, I, I think some of it has to do, uh, we're a little bit bigger at some of the guard spots, uh, Adam and, um, you know, I think that's helped. And then Kyle and EJ and Zed uh, at those at those kind of forward spots, they're good rebounders. Uh, Justice is a good positional rebounder. Um, so I think that the, maybe the most significant difference has been uh, on the on the offensive glass. Um, you know, Gene's helped with that. Musa has helped with that. Uh, Justice has helped with that. Uh, we've got to get better on the defensive glass and we've got to continue to emphasize uh, the offensive glass as being an important part of our overall offensive efficiency. Um, I think for us to be successful, it has to continue to be a point of emphasis. And sort of along those lines, uh, the way that, that Kyle and EJ have, have both kind of been able to play with each other uh, to, to a pretty high, high level and at times have really carried you. Did you know that you could play them as much uh, coming into the season together as you've been able to? No, I don't think I did. You know, I think we we anticipated that as a staff, that that was going to be the look we were going to want to go with. Um, <clears throat> but it's really evolved since the first practice, Adam. Um, we've actually kind of uh, uh, changed them um, offensively and, and, and somewhat defensively within our system. Uh, we started out one way. We flipped it a little bit based on just, a, you know, observing them playing together and through, you know, really the first 30 practices. So they've got a really good chemistry together. I think they complement each other in a good way. Um, and you're right. When, when we're playing well, Adam, um, those guys are at the center of it. 
do you consider either of them a, a center? Like, nah, not really. No, I really don't. We don't. I mean, if you're just going to number them, you just number them just to designate. But they're both forwards. You know, they're both forwards. And you know, again, as as we've said a number of times, it's the way a lot of college basketball play play plays. But no, I do just consider them both forwards. And we'll go back to Tim. Hey, sorry, Chris. No worries, Tim. With I had a question about CJ again, and I'm just trying to get a read. It it really seemed like a somber mood the first time we had that Zoom conference with you last week about his his timetable. Are you looking at this at a five games, ten games, hoping to get him back this season? He looked like he was in good spirits too on on the sideline in the last. Yeah, he's season. yeah he's disappointed, but he's in great spirits. I mean, you know how kids are. They're they're. He's a great teammate. He led from the front of the bench uh, in our Rutgers game. He continues to lead in practice. You know, he's he's anxious to get back, uh, Tim. I just don't know right now um, how that thing is going to heal in the time frame on it. You know, we've heard a number of different time frames, and at this point we just don't know. I, I don't think he'll – he'll come back until he feels comfortable that it's healthy enough to. Um, and I completely understand that. Um, but he's anxious to come back. He's, he knows we need him. Um, I think he sees that and he's anxious to get back uh, with his, with his brothers. I'm also just wondering, you know, it's, you played a big chunk of the season now, just with everything that's happened and how you look at the conference, maybe the rest of college basketball, just what, what are your feelings? What, what's your confidence level in, in your team right now as well? Well, listen, I, I, um, I really like our group. I like our team. Um, and um, I, you know, I feel, feel good about this, this group of guys. Um, but I, I don't, I don't really spend a whole lot of time, Tim, you know, taking a step back and right now, cause you're just in the midst of, of the daily grind and preparing your team to get better. But, um, uh, you know, like every team, um, you know, we're going to experience adversity, but uh, I, I really love coaching this group. Um, obviously I, I hope, and I'm optimistic that at some point we'll get, uh, we'll get the injuries behind us, but um, I really like this group and we've got, guys that have really, you know, performed well for stretches. Hopefully we can get some consistency to how we play uh, overall. Thanks. Okay, we'll go back to Patrick Murphy. Chris, I'm not sure I've heard you talk about this yet, but the, the NCAA rule or the NCAA announcing the, the tournament in Indiana, um, just your thoughts on that, obviously a state you're familiar with and, you know, buildings you're familiar with and whatnot and playing everyone in, in that state, what, just curious what you made of, of that decision by the NCAA. Well, I think it's a smart I idea, great idea to, to, to put it in one city, uh, one, one venue, to, to get it in a place where um, I think they can control as much as the fact, uh, as much as possible, some of the outside factors. You're trying to mitigate risk as much as possible uh, in this. Uh, but outside of that, uh, Patrick, honestly, I've not, I'm not giving it much thought. Um, you know, I think, you know, without making too much of it, you know, I, for coaches, we're kind of in a, we're in a hole a little bit. Like we don't, you know, we don't, you know, at least I think most of us, we don't really engage with anything outside of, of our team or anything else that doesn't necessarily affect our team. And last night watching the game was one of the, the few times where you kind of had a chance to, to, to put your mind on something else. I'm not saying that's healthy. I'm just saying that's reality. So uh, beyond that, I, you know, I, I took a moment uh, last week with some of the stuff that was going on in the country to uh, observe that. And that was, that was tough to see, but uh, you're such in a tunnel here um, in terms of uh, your own, your own team and the progress of your own team. Go back to Nicole. Chris, I just wanted to follow up on what you just said about, you know, what happened last week. And, you know, D'Angelo Russell kind of called out the media um, and asked, you know, they asked him how he felt about it and he turned it around on them. And I'm, I'm curious, 
what if any conversations you've had as a team about the circumstances and the environment and the you know the the racial inequity that we saw and just you know we don't like you know in some ways we don't like to see the world interfering with sports but that's what sports is all about is this intersection of sport and society and so how do you kind of broach such an incredibly weighty topic with them and how do they respond to that you know i think i think in general my you know my first responsibility is to our players that's what uh, their their families um that's what they did when they when they sent them here to under our care um so that is my first responsibility and and outside of that um you know i, I don't I, I i think what impacts them what concerns them what bothers them um and obviously dating back to the summer and all of the conversation and dialogue that happened in the summer um uh, you know that's my responsibility and as i've said a number of times i, I didn't get into this uh, profession just to be a basketball coach i, I got in the profession to help young men grow and in uh, whatever way we can as a staff help them grow and mature and see the world from a bigger perspective and see the world uh from from a from a, a bigger angle and a bigger place um and i think um, the conversations that we've had since the summer have been engaging and enlightening uh, for me, um, uh, probably more so than, than them. You know, we had a time uh, uh, just we had a meal late because we had we got tested at Rutgers. So we didn't get to the hotel until I think it was around 10 or 1030 and that uh, we had a meal there uh, together. And I sat down with them and we started talking about it. We had a conversation. It was interesting hearing some of their thoughts, but um, uh, I'll keep that all between us. I just think they're, they're my first responsibility in this. And obviously it impacts them in different ways, but it all impacts them. Okay, looks like that's all coach.